This is true. This is on the building. Uh, so on September. That's what I was going to guess. I was going to so guess on, basically that. <laughs> so on September 26, 1820, Johnson stood on the steps of Salem. So we do have a main topic tonight, and um, this one, you, you were kind of like, okay, whatever, let's do this. And uh, so it's poisonous. Did you know tomatoes are poisonous? I mean, I've heard that they're a, a member of the Nightshade family, but I didn't really yeah. know anything beyond that. Well, they're, they're um, have you heard of, so like, like they're, what do you, do you, do you consider them a vegetable or a fruit? I think they're technically a fruit. And well, they have seeds, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go fruit. Okay, you're gonna fruit. Okay, well, you know, so yes, tomatoes can be a little poisonous. So we're gonna go over that. And there was one person that saved tomatoes forever. So we're we're gonna cover. And there was a trial in Salem. You've heard of a trial before, right? In Salem. <laughs> yeah, those don't typically end well for people. <laughs> yeah, but so you've heard of the the witch trials, right? Okay. Of course. Yeah. So whenever you think salem trials you think of witches and evil stuff not tomatoes and, and well after this you might so um so we all know this story but there was an actual trial in in a, a trial for tomatoes in salem however there was a different salem it was new salem new jersey so a little a little bit south of where discount salem it discount salem yeah so in the 19th century that this happened however it uh so it, <clears throat> It's history rooted long before that. So, like, people were afraid of tomatoes long before this trial. Pretty, pretty wild, right? So, tomatoes were really from the Aztecs' uh, cuisine. Like, they, they had them. You could have in your, you could see them in South America, right? In your salsas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, when Spanish conquistadors returned to the homeland from Mexico um, and Mesoamerica, they brought tomato seeds with them. So, they grew them and you know decorated. They didn't really eat them. They tomatoes were really not grown for eating because they didn't know you could eat them. I guess the Aztecs didn't share that information. <laughs> they were yeah, used and, as, and who as... wants to be the guy that tries it first and finds out that you can't. <laughs> well, someone did. Um, so oh, wait, wait, Jacob says, what comes first, chicken or the egg? I just ordered both on Amazon. I'll just let you know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Da -dum. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so um, so they were only used for decor. Can you imagine that decorating your house with tomatoes? They get I mean, kind of squishy. Tomato vines aren't really the prettiest thing. Yeah, I'm but they can like they, shrubbery or trees. But and if you bright. ever like leave a tomato out for a while, they get kind of squishy, right? They kind of get gross. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. So they um, they just thought they were beautiful, like red. You know, they're in European gardens. They just grew them there and just, just tossed them. You know, whatever birds ate them. Um, by the late 1700s, the settlement regard, um, regarding tomatoes changed. Um, there were some people that still ate them. They started eating them. Uh, so per this, per this site, they still ate them. The Christmas color, Christmas color became associated with danger, though, and sin. Uh, people began to fear tomatoes, and their rep reputation was tarnished again. So they started eating them, like, trying them out, and someone did eat them. But then something happened where they stopped eating them, and they thought they were sinful. Um, so yeah, they, they, that they, uh, tomatoes were thought to be poisonous. They were nicknamed the poisonous apple. Tomatoes were considered deadly. It later turned out that the, the reason why was because they were eating them off pewter plates. Um, and pewter plates have a wealth, high amounts of, uh, lead mm. on the plate. So the acid of the tomato <laughs> was absorbing the lead on the plate. Um, and when you would eat that, they would, they would, they would die. <laughs> I mean, e even today, uh, tomatoes, if you cook them in certain cookware, will wear down the nonstick coating. Or if you cook them in cast iron, it'll eat through the seasoning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're pretty, eat. they have a pretty high um, acid content, right? They're pretty, yeah. it says here, you know, their, their acidity levels is, you know, pretty high. So yeah, people were dying because they were eating tomatoes again. So everybody was like, stay away from the tomatoes. So according to uh, the the vintage news doctors warned against eating them and made claim that they're supposedly ill effects likewise. So John Gerald, a barber and a surgeon did further damage. He believed them to be poisonous due to a toxin called tomino tain. He, he, he just said they were just, 
poisonous. So everyone believed that guy and no one ate him again. So they got bad rep for that. In truth, okay. they do have a toxin, but not enough to harm humans. Um, regardless, people refuse to eat the now beloved red fruit. See, it's a fruit. Um, until the man named Colonel Robert Gibbon Johnson came along. So this man here saved the day. So what do you think about that? Like, that's pretty fascinating, right? Like, yeah. And I actually learned only recently that of often in old days, barbers and surgeons were one person. So seeing that right here, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. And Jacob says down there that the uh, silver leaf nightshade is a tomato family um, and it's deadly poisonous. Yep. And you uh, also mentions that um, tomatoes back in the day were uh, cherry tomatoes. They weren't as big as today. Well, that's because this man saved them. <laughs> yeah, attack of the killer tomatoes. Um, so Robert here, um, he was born, you know, around 1771 and lived about 1850. Also known as Colonel Johnson, was an American gentleman, farmer, historian, horticulturist, uh, judge, soldier, and statesman. So he did a lot in Salem. Wow. Um, he was a, a keen, uh, he wrote history of Salem. He was a historic um, account of all the settlement that happened there. So he took record of everything that happened in this little town. Um, he had a book that was um, published or an article that was published in 1839. So as mentioned, he was, he kind of like was like, he liked to be in the garden. So there you go. Here's a picture of him eating tomatoes. He looks pretty happy. He doesn't look dead. Right. Not yet. <laughs> he he ran. So and he wrote um, about the marshland in New Jersey, how you can you know change it to like grow stuff. Um, his reputation credited him with introducing a tomato to the era around 1820. So because of him, tomatoes became a significant crop in southern New Jersey, which was able to ship its fresh, ripe produce to the local large markets of New York and Philadelphia. However, even then, even though much. Um, Contemporary material relating to Johnson survives. The first written claim associated with the induction of tomato to Salem dates only to the early 20th century. So this guy, he was a big component. He was like really on board about tomatoes. He grew them. But before all this happened, we people still didn't want to eat them. So he had to really do something crazy for people to believe for them to sell these tomatoes in New York and everything. And you know what he did? So he, Johnson encountered the tomato on his travels and brought some home with him in 1808. He wanted to encourage tomato production in the U S and offered awards to anyone who grew the largest tomatoes. So that's where the big tomatoes come from. Um, he did not have a lot of takers, however, because of the convention wisdom about toxic side effects. So people still didn't, they still thought they were poisonous. Um, so Johnson grew frustrated when his, uh, with his words failed to persuade the public. He finally decided an extreme measure to prove the fruit of his prize uh, plant was safe to consume. So, so, this, so what he did was, and this is true. This is on the building. Uh, so on September. That's 17, what I was going to guess. I was going to so guess on, basically that. <laughs> so on September 26, 1820, Johnson stood on the steps on Salem's courthouse as a crowd gathered to watch. Johnson ate an entire basket of tomatoes. Can you believe that? It's like someone watching someone eating like a basket of poison and you're like, oh my God, he's going to kill himself, right? And yeah, and everyone... a crowd shows up just like, oh, <laughs> can you believe this guy? This is terrible, <laughs> right? Yeah, I can't look away. When is he going to drop dead? Yeah, like they had probably had bets like it's going to be the fifth tomato, the eighth tomato. <laughs> everyone watched with morbid fascination and what was apparently an attempt to commit suicide in the full public view. When Johnson wiped his mouth and patted his full, patted his full tummy, demonstrating that he suffered no ill effects from his snack. He thus proved that the tomato was safe to one and all. So there you go. So because of the, the of Johnson, and they even named the hall after him, um, he, oh. um, yeah, they've named the courthouse after him. Uh, he saved tomatoes. And he, now that that's where you got, where people were buying them from New York and Philadelphia and New Jersey became the like tomato capital of um <laughs> of that time and, and you want to have ketchup without after this person you know think well, about think that technically you would because there's different kinds of ketchup it's any fruit can be put into ketchup there's banana ketchup i've never tried it don't want to there is no such thing as a banana ketchup there is <laughs> i won't make you google it on stream but y'all go out there look there's other <laughs>